This video is brought to you by my ebook, Texting Women Like a Boss. The link is in the description. If you ever find yourself blindsided by your girlfriend or wife saying that they wanna leave you, chances are it's because you haven't been paying attention. Welcome to Harry Dating Convos. I'm your host, Harry Wilmington. You know, there's a thing that happens when a breakup occurs. And what happens is this, is that usually, more often than not, it's the woman going to the guy saying, hey, it's over, I'm done with this. And men will stand there and be shocked. How could she be breaking up with me? Why is she just now telling me this? And how? what was I doing and what happened that made her wanna break up? Like, guys get genuinely surprised, and yet, in my practice of having done this for a long time, as I talk to men about how the breakup occurred or what the woman said when she was doing the breaking up, you start to realize that, oh, this wasn't suddenly out of the blue. This was something that was building up for a long time and the guy was just oblivious. And a big proponent of this is lack of effort by men to be able to listen to women when they're airing out legitimate grievances and trying to do something on your side of things to show that whatever she brought up was important enough to realize that, oh, you need to be doing your part to make things right. And so I came across an interesting thing today. Uh, there's this column called Dear Abby, where this woman named Abby takes letters in and answers them. And so she got two messages from two different women that are going through different situations, but in both cases, the men involved are not showing effort to show that whatever the woman's bringing up is actually of importance. And so she's writing Dear Abby, asking what they should do. And to be fair, I think Dear Abby actually gave some crappy answers, and I'll go over why that is as I go through these messages. But suffice to say, these men are gonna be completely shocked if their women come to them and say, we're breaking up, I want a divorce, this isn't working out. But this is true of most men. We hear women say things here and there, and if they're not yelling, if they're not saying it too harshly, we assume it's either no big deal, or if we brush it off, they'll eventually forget about it because in the grand scheme of things, this isn't a major thing for us to have to combat. And I try to tell you guys on this show time and time again, when women bring things up, it is always a huge deal, especially if it's one of those things where they're bringing up something where they want you to put an effort to fix it and you decide not to. Now, they also feel ignored by the person that is supposed to love and care for them most, and it's not fair to them. So let's go over this, right? So here's the first message uh, that wrote, they said, Dear Abby, eight years ago, my husband of 26 years had a stroke. His personality changed. He was difficult to deal with, but things started to get better. Two years ago, he finally kicked a long-time prescription drug habit. Our finances improved almost overnight, for which I'm grateful, but his personality changed again. This change has been neither pleasant nor easy to deal with. Some days he gets angry with me for talking to him about even the simplest things like traffic or the weather. So what's happened is this guy, whatever personality change he has, it's resulted in his woman feeling as though she has to walk around on eggshells when she's near him. Women don't like that feeling. Just like as guys, we don't like the idea of we can't say anything to the woman we're with without being judged or criticized for it. So women don't like that either. So even if this guy is going through some kind of hormonal change or going through some kind of change as a result of not taking these drugs, that doesn't take away that she could very well know he's changed as a result of that but also not wanna be the punching bag as a result of those changes that have occurred. So, then she says, don't get me wrong, I don't want him to go back to abusing drugs, but I want my best friend back. For at least a year now, I've been begging him to go to marriage counseling with me. He says he will, okay, he says he will, but has put no effort into finding a counselor. He grew up in a small town that we live in, so I don't. So, so I want him to choose the counselor because I may accidentally choose someone he knows and doesn't want to talk to. I'm afraid he will never make an appointment. So should I just find a counselor for myself? I don't want to throw away 26 years of marriage, but some days all I think about is running away. All right. So to recap, this woman is like, dude. Your personality's changed since you got off the drugs, which kudos for him for doing that part, but he may not have been aware of just how much that affected what his personality actually is. Because if you grow up dependent on things like drugs and alcohol, you haven't had a chance to actually practice 
how you would really be around people without those substances. And so it can be agitating because you're coming against people and the old mechanics of how you would deal with them aren't there because of the drugs and alcohol no longer being there. And so you can get frustrated because you're trying to learn new things and maybe they're not always working at first or you're not sure where to start at and that can cause you to wanna to lash out. But again, it's not the other person's responsibility to take that lashing. And so she's just simply saying, hey, we need to go to counseling to figure this out. And she's wanting him to do his part, which is, hey, just reach out, look around. You've been in this town longer than me. You know people, you know who we should and should not talk to. So, you know, I'm willing to do the counseling. I just need you to do your part to look it up. And he's like, I don't wanna do that. So that leaves her in a very frustrated situation whereby she wants to stay with this guy whom she's loved for all this time, but she's now with a partner that's not in her head doing the things to show that he really loves her by simply trying to make the marriage work by going to counseling and by picking something out, right? And so this is where she's wanting him to put forth a little bit of effort. Dear Abby's response was, uh, I don't know what could be the cause of your husband's anger and neither will you until you get to the bottom of it. Do not allow the fact that he is stalling prevent you from consulting a licensed marriage and family therapist. Compile a list of counseling services, not only in your town, but also some neighboring communities. Once you have the names, show the list to your husband and ask if he knows any of them. Then you make an appointment for the both of you with one or more therapists and interview them. If he refuses to accompany you, go on your own. So what Dear Abby has basically told this chick is, okay, well, if he won't do it, you need to be the one to do that. But I can imagine in their 26 years of marriage that she's been the starter for a lot of various projects, for a lot of things that they've had to do as a couple. I don't know if they have kids or not, but usually the moms are the ones that are trying to figure out plans for groceries and what to cook for the kids and dinner's the plan and where to take kids for the summer. So I'm guessing she's probably done more than her fair share of having to do lifting to where she's like, all he has to do is just look up a counselor. He can just go, go to Google, type in counselors in your area, look some people up. It could take like 30 minutes tops, boom, you're done. And so he's putting all the work of that happening onto her. And this is not the first woman to experience this because women at large experience a lot of times their men that are trying to put all the work on them or say, oh no, baby, you got this or I don't wanna do that. Or, and this all starts as early as the first date where a woman agrees to a date and then she's like, where do you wanna go? And the guy's like, well, I don't know, wherever you wanna go. So you gotta understand, guy, that women are, are going with it, through this on a consistent basis to where they're like, some days I'm just tired of planning things. But ideally, I have a partner that's there that can also take off some of that burden. If you're not, this is a major component to why you may be losing women is because they're feeling as though all the effort is on them to put forth things and you are not seeming like a participating partner, which can become very, very frustrating and annoying to the woman that loves you. Even if she has a high interest level in you, over time, it can start to wear down when she feels as though you're not putting in your effort. If you're a guy that's been having problems in his dating life or in his relationships, chances are it means that you don't have blueprints set up to know how to handle when certain situations arise. For example, when you're in a situation meeting women, how do you approach them? If you're about to get into an argument with your significant other, what things can you do or say to make sure that she feels heard and the problem gets resolved? I cover a variety of topics in my various programs and eBooks, all of which are in my Introvert Dating Success Academy program, which you can learn all about at Introvert Dating Success Com. Take control of your dating life and finally get the women that you deserve by checking out this amazing program. Once again, you can check it out at introvertdatingsuccess.com. So let's go on to the next message. And this person goes, Dear Abby, not long ago, my husband replaced the key entry lock on the front door of our house with a digital one. Ever since, the door does not latch when you go in or out. I actually uh, live someplace where there's also one of those attachments on the door and yeah, I never use it. Like I never try locking it because it does the same thing where it latches and doesn't want to close all the way or it'll latch and be hard to open up. Like it's horrible. Anyway, so she says, I've told him it needs to be fixed, but he insists I need to just pull it. So what's he doing? He's being dismissive to her needs and he's trying to make like it's no big deal. Like, oh, you just pulled the thing. And now, now keep in mind guys, Men are typically stronger than women. So a guy just being like, just pull the door a little bit and it's totally fine. As a guy, no big deal. To a woman, that's extra strength, 
that she has to use to pull a door every single time she goes into her apartment or her house, and she's probably not wanting to do that. So again, this is why to her, this is a viable concern because for one, safety, she doesn't want a door that doesn't lock. She doesn't want to you know, rush into to the house one day and just slam the door and think, okay, the door is closed and then it not actually be closed because that's a, that's a serious concern for women. So for him to just dismiss it like it's no big deal, this is a major problem and it's going to not make her feel like she's heard or understood. So then she says, Abby, this door always latched before. Workers come in and out of the house and I'm very concerned, rightfully so. She says, my husband is fighting me tooth and nail on this for some odd reason and I'm ready to leave him. I told him I will get the door fixed on his credit card if he doesn't do it. He still refuses. I'm done. I want a secure front door. What the heck is wrong here? We've been married 40 years. Do you recommend a divorce attorney? So the fact that she's bringing the words divorce and divorce attorney into this conversation, this is not the first time this has happened. Again, you guys are thinking that women are just coming to you and saying off one incident, that's it, I'm totally done. This is a, the result of 40 years of not feeling heard, of bringing up concerns that aren't being listened to by the husband or being brushed off or being told it's no big deal, all right? So we come to us, we just hear them say it's done, we're thinking what's going on, but again, you haven't been paying attention. You haven't seen the times where she brought something up to you, you dismissed it, and then she gave you that look, or she said to you, oh, okay, but had the tone of voice, it was like she just feels like she's been defeated, or you know, giving you signs that indicate that she's not feeling like uh, somebody that's being heard in this partnership. And again, because you're thinking, well, I just brushed it off and she didn't fight me back on it. It's totally fine. It must not have been a big deal. But to women, just bringing it up to you was the big deal. But women that genuinely care for you and aren't trying to be the nagging wife or partner are going to think, well, I don't want to fight them. So I'll just bury this into my resentment that I've been building for years and just act like it's no big deal. And they can only play the part for so long. Like they can put on a good show, but at some point, they're gonna get tired of being an actress. It may be until not until they're 30, 35, 40, but inevitably, they're gonna get tired of feeling like time after time, when they bring something up, you just act like it's no big deal. This is 40 years in. So she's saying she wants a divorce after 40 years. This is not the first time this has happened. So anyway, so that happens. And then Dear Abby's response is, I do not recommend a divorce attorney. You deserve to feel safe in your own home. Stop fighting with your husband, become proactive and get the darn door fixed because he won't help. Remember the adage, if you want something done right, do it yourself, then step forward and take charge. So again, we have Dear Abby saying, you need to be the one to make the moves and the effort. You need to take charge. You need to do blah, blah, blah. You woman need to put forth the effort because your husband is darn sure not gonna do it. And why are you bugging him in the first place? That's, that's, the, that's the tonality that I feel when I hear that answer, okay? Because again, 40 years. So she's probably been doing what Dear Abby said for her to do for the last 40 years. Well, he won't do it, so I guess I gotta do it. Well, he won't take the kids to school or make their lunch, so I guess I'll step into the kitchen and do it and not make it a big deal. But time after time after time after time of doing that, a woman is going to get very annoyed and eventually want to leave you, okay? There are a lot of women out there that unfortunately, they will, they will shut up. They will be quiet. They know the stereotype of the nagging wife. They don't want to do that. And they'll just stuff all those things down and all those things they're feeling. And they'll start hiding things from you that they actually feel or think about because they're like, they know that it's not going to gel with you. And that's, is that really the kind of relationship that you want to be in? One where your woman's so afraid of what you're, how you're going to respond or just knows off the bat you're not going to listen or make her, make her grievances feel like less than to where she doesn't come to you with grievances at all. And you're thinking, oh, I'm at peace. We, always, we, never, we never fight. We never have to have any quarrels because we're just always so great. And it's really because she learned to shut up. But again, over time, is that in your best interest? Because the reality is, all she's gonna be thinking is, I'm putting forth 100% of this effort and the few things I ask him to do, he can't even do those. Why would I stick around, okay? So this is another notice to you guys that when women are bringing things to your attention, and this is, these aren't even like arguments. This is like, I want him to fix the door and I want him to go to counseling because he got off these drugs and he's been a little wonky. These aren't 
even outlandish requests. And there are women out there that'll make outlandish requests. These are some simple requests that guys could do, but because they're, they're the man and I'm in my feelings and I don't wanna do that thing, because they don't wanna do it, they're not looking at, for the betterment of the relationship though, would it be a good idea to do these things? So be the guy that wants to always take their partner into consideration and make them feel as though their needs are as important to you as it is to them. Even if it's not, the reality is, in terms of the long term of keeping the peace and making her feel heard and making her feel like you admire her and respect her as a partner, it is to your benefit to just listen to women and when they say, hey, honey, could you fix the door? Or hey, could you simply look something up online? These aren't hard tasks. You know, back in the day, men had actual hard tasks like go, I don't know, dig up a graveyard or like, you know, construct our entire house so we can live here. If they're asking you to do a Google search for a therapist or to look up a person online to come fix a door, these are outlandish requests. Just do them. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out this episode of Harry Dating Convos. If you like what you heard, give it a like and a subscribe. Also, if you have a question or concern you'd like answered on one of these shows, you can either write to me at harry at introvertdatingsuccess.com or you can leave a comment down underneath my videos. If you have a more dire situation that you'd like attended to, you can also sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching by going to introvertdatingsuccess.com and clicking on the coaching tab. While you're there, be sure to check out my eBooks, audiobooks, and programs, all designed to help you impact your dating life in a positive way. Thanks for watching. I'm Harry Wilmington, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace.